That zombie is eating a cow! Disgusting! Oh, wait. I also love to eat cows. Atomic Heart! A.K.A. Robopocalypse. A.K.A. Robo Sapien Revolution. A.K.A. When Soviets Make a Union. Robots have taken over the motherland. Also, spoilers have taken over this video, so be prepared. No. No. They're here! <laughs> yes, robots have indeed taken over the motherland. Which, isn't that the goal of communism? To turn everyone into a robot-like widget that's part of an unerring collective? Collective, you say? Spell it with a K, and that's the plot of the game. Collective was designed as a worldwide union for equal human beings, where robots will do everything for them. One guy wants to plug everybody's brain into a big old network called Collective, and another guy wants to also do that. Except capitalists, because, you know, those guys are the worst, <laughs> am I right? We can't let capitalists and imperialists and collective. But then you find out that everybody plugged into the collective gets their free will taken away. Are we sure this game is made by Russians? I was getting whiplash from the politics of this game, I'll tell you what. Wait, the collective is the enemy? And the pseudo-president of the country is a psycho who wants mega power? But it turns out in the end, the real bad guy was your biker glove? Whoa, what is that? What is that? What is it? Make way for the next phase of evolution. Oh, that's a new take on evolution. Uh, evolving into ooze. One second, the main antagonist is criticizing both communism and capitalism in the same breath. Get rid of me and let robots toil for us. Get rid of inequality and the lie of communism. Give people freedom of choice. Then the next, you find out the game is called Atomic Heart because that's the name of the plan to destroy all the capitalists. And it's portrayed as one of the many horrifying things you need to stop the antagonist from enacting. This is a top secret project designed to crush the resistance of our class enemies, Facility 3826 has been a player on the capitalist market for many years now, providing a labor force, i.e. robots, to the entire world free of charge as a way to skirt sanctions. Oh yeah, that uh, checks out. I mean, why are the Soviets giving us free robots? <laughs> uh, well, they're just trying to skirt sanctions. It's fine. Let's integrate all these robots into every aspect of our being. Oh, that's not gonna go bad. <laughs> After switching them to combat mode, we will capture rival countries' nuclear reactors and demand that power be handed over to the people. We will demonstrate the advantages of our ideology and disseminate it throughout the world. Which is basically what's happening in Ukraine right now. Quick reminder, this is the villain. This is the villain of the whole game giving his nefarious speech before you go to try to stop him from taking everyone's free will away. Then you uh, shoot the bad guy. You shoot him. Cheriton's manipulating you! And he's dying and... Now, suddenly, oops, he's portrayed as the sympathetic, misunderstood guy. Tell me, Charity, did you do the same thing to Dr. Vladimir? But they didn't deserve to die. Why have you done this? Charity, you're pure evil. He's pure evil? You were just planning world domination and turning everyone into a robotic slaves without free will. You both are pure evil. Oh man, this game, I don't... Now Glove Man is just trying to, to kill all the humans to become the next evolution of robot apocalypse. It was a wild political ride. Can we talk about how psycho this cat is? This... We, we, he, you have the primary secret antagonist turn into a goo man, and then he goes and he pets a cat with no eyes and hair on all over its face. What, a, what the heck is... Who wrote this? Who wrote this scene? This is insane.
before we go any further, let's address the elephant in the room. The Russian government is actually evil. They are enacting a hideous and narcissistic war on Ukraine, all in the name of a man so riddled with psychosis, he's basically an anime villain. But does that make these developers bad, too? I had a fair amount of cognitive dissonance when I started this game but came to the conclusion that I personally wouldn't condemn these developers for the sins of their government. These guys have been making this game for the last six years. If I was a developer and my government enacted a horrifying war when I was relatively close to releasing my game, what would my thoughts be? I don't want to go super deep into this, because, you know, we're talking about some video games, oh, whoa, but... Uh, to sum it all up, I think the Russian government is horrible and atrocious and bad. But I think that these developers are passionate gamers who made a thing, and uh, and I played it. On a lighter note, look at this funny glitch! <laughs> oh, wow, heavy duty. Woo, the woo, 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 this broom is wild! It's bugging like a bronco! I don't know if I want to keep that section in. This game is the love child of a bunch of other games. <laughs> Little bit of Half-Life 2 head crabs, but they're plants. He's mutated! No, he's fine. He, he's just going through some stuff. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. A heavy dose of Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 with the scavenging and a, the apocalypse? but better just the uh, scavenging part because you've got a vacuum cleaner to hoover up resources like a Kerbo who's been fasting for months. <laughs> there is something inherently satisfying about this experience. Then throw in a massive mega dose of Bioshock with the left hand powers, the elements, the telekinesis. The storytelling through set dressing, the floating city is Bioshock Infinite, and they even name drop the underwater complex Rapture while you're viewing it from a descending elevator. Utopia gone haywire? Need I say more? Resident Evil style save rooms. Saving data. The exact Skyrim lock picking minigame. But where this game really stands on its own two feet is the implementation of movement in the melee. You have some Doom style dashes and enemies telegraph moves that will knock you off your feet with red circles. So melee combat becomes a dance of reaction and timing. Sometimes you do this melee dance, literally, while ballet music is playing. The melee experience is the true star of the combat of this game. Hits are weighty and leave scars and dents. Blows are heavy and knock your target around. It never stop being entertaining, whacking these robots around with a variety of melee options. You even get a spin attack.
Oh, I think I'm gonna puke. How does Link do this all the time? Just like you have the option to move quickly, a lot of the enemies move very quickly as well, which is frequently a no-no in first-person shooters. Probably because consoles exist, and uh, console players are incapable of quick movement with their aiming reticle. Oh, console players, what a dumb. What a, uh, I should not be attacking console players. This is a mistake. The bosses move quickly. They shoot crazy rocket attacks that are fast, and you gotta dodge them with precision. Enemies move fast. You move fast. The game is usually fast, except for when it's, you know, not. Ha! Wow! Hard difficulty makes enemies especially bosses, mind-numbingly spongy and ruins what could have been excellent moments. I usually love playing games on maximum difficulty, but this is not one of those games. Do not play this game on hard. That joy of melee expression gets traded in for grinding your face against the pavement of the worst possible difficulty slider. The increased health slider. I see you want the game to be more difficult. Let me introduce you to a foolproof modality. Let's just take this numerical value and go whoa! Good difficulty obtained. False. Wrong. Bad. The slider you should be messing with is number of enemies present, speed of enemy attacks, scantness of resources. The most glorious portion of the game gets rapidly thrown to the wayside because of how extremely readily available ammo is. Maybe I'm just saying that because I'm OCD about collecting resources. There's a small town over there, filled with resources. Yes, this is a good spot to find the resources. Oh, oh, don't mind me, I'm only going to take all these resources. Oh, yes! Look at these resources, give them to me. For the good of the Soviet Union, all of these are mine now. Yes, they are mine. I was absolutely swimming in bullets, but a few hours into the game. And when you're not incentivized to melee, a la, I have many, many bullets, and guns do extremely more damage per second. Then it becomes a strange and awkward experience to throw that all away to engage with the melee once more. But I did it, because the melee is the star. They sacrificed it on the altar of gun combat, which is a shame. But it remains glorious all the same. Yeah, the guns are fine, you can slot them with elemental effects which actually just trivializes the game. Slap an ice pack on your gun, and the game nuance is gone. This robot is very dangerous in melee combat. <laughs> oh. Grab a Pikachu and rub it on your gun like a balloon on some carpet. Combat is now trivial. But you get that melee combat going, and that's where the game lives and breathes. They've got a really unique, well, maybe not unique, they've got a really fun system where you build your energy by doing melee attacks. You use your energy to do your electric-based weapons. So there's a cycle of switching between melee, going to your electric guns, and uh, you go back and forth. That's a great cycle, but I never had to engage with that cycle because of how many bullets I had. I, why do I need to charge energy when I've got unlimited bullets? Isn't that right, Sergey? Crispy critters. You what? <laughs> Crispy critters? And that's my mind. Crispy critters. Oh, Crispy critters! State your name and personal access code. Crispy critters. Invalid name. What the heck? This writing was pretty stupid. 
It's not even like schlocky stupid. It's like actual stupid. Your main character spends a fair amount of the game complaining about the activities you're doing. Now I gotta deal with another crazy. I'm a magnet for annoying. And he does this for the entire game. Not helping me to be excited about this gameplay loop there, Sergey. But fun fact. Just switch the game over to the native language of Russian, and suddenly this character who spends all his time complaining starts to make sense. When Russian guy is complaining, it's just... Yeah, that tracks. That might come across as a gag, but I really thought it was a significantly better game when played in Russian. The writing was usually pretty bad. But it wasn't always bad. Look at this nutty scene. Once again, here's that guy in Russian. Listen to this guy in English, though. Oof, that's pretty rough. Speaking of stereotypes, this game fits all of them in, except Cossack dancing. You think of Russia, what do you think of? AK-47? Check. Vodka? Check. Babushkas? Check. Baba Yaga? Check. Your hut? What kind of Baba Yaga would I be without a hut on chicken legs? Other thing that Russia's known for? Ballet. Double check. It feels like it would be a caricature in poor taste, but it's Russians doing it. Game was pretty good. Story was extremely unsatisfying. The sci-fi setting was awesome. The mystery of Polymer was fascinating. The first time you see floating globs of polymer, then you go swimming through it. That was some video game magic. This was not the first time that you see floating globs of polymer or that you go swimming through it, but it made for a better shot. That's the kind of thing that makes sci-fi good. Not the hard facts, but the sense of wonder and the questions that it spawns. What is that? How does it work? How does it connect? And those answers get slowly uncovered. You see how polymer is made. You see how it's used. Your character is also a mystery. Whenever you swim in polymer, you hear voices. No idea how dangerous the polymer is. Because of a residual polymer signal in the brain, most of the NPCs you talk to are dead people. One of these corpses informs you that you are dead also. What are you talking about? I'm alive and well. Are you? Because the impulses I'm receiving from your brain implant are telling me Major Nechayev, in fact, died quite a while ago. Then that just sends your head spinning with possible explanations. Am I just a polymerized corpse? Am I a robot? When sci-fi can get you to ask these kinds of questions, and feeling like the answer is just barely out of reach. That to me is the essence of sci-fi. And this game did it great. It's narrative, on the other hand, pretty poopy. 
I'm lame. Oh no. Most of the characters get their arcs just sort of thrown by the wayside. The satisfying conclusion of taking out the power-obsessed crazy dictator who wants to rob anybody who thinks different than him of free will gets the old bait and switch. Maybe this was the Russian government censors saying, you can't have the psycho dictator actually be the villain. That's against the rules. It wasn't a fun bait and switch. It was a, what the heck am I even looking at bait and switch. They set the cliché meter to 9,000 on this one. Your glove who was your friend is actually the true villain. Everyone loses! <laughs> He's been using your brain implant to make you murderize everyone who got in his way. Your crazy go nuts better after you kill him. You find out he was just trying to do it for the good of mankind. Oh, but there is an even twistier twist. Your wife's consciousness got stuffed into the ballerina robots. What a dramatic twist. But the real dramatic twist. This crazy babushka is your mother-in-law. So you must be... Your mother-in-law, you stupid ignoramus. Man, what a Russian way to end a video game, though. Your character is... loses. He loses his fight. The bad guy's gonna win, you're about to die, and he fades away into his little dopamine world, the ob oblivious, and his wife who is inhabiting a robot comes to, uh, you know, be with him in his final moments. Yep, it's pretty Russian to me. <laughs> Another thing on the rough side was the glitches. Algorithms are glitching with horror. Fun fact, when I played this, you could not pick up your highest tier resource that you get from mini bosses. They would just hover there in the air, unobtainable. This meant you couldn't get the best upgrades for your guns, the ones that made them truly unique. Also couldn't craft the final gun, the rail gun. But to sum it all up, game was fast and crazy and Russian. And the melee is really good. <laughs>